As Ladina said, we had a. I'm going to apologize up front and personal because I thought that I would have a couple more weeks to kind of polish it, so this is definitely an unpolished presentation. <laughs> um, but I am Teresa Martin and I am Studio Thought Marketing Website Designer. And basically, what I'm kind of going to do tonight is give you an overview now. I get excited and I start talking really fast, <laughs> so tell me if you need me to slow down. But I also have a ton of information, so I think last time I presented, I like. I felt like I just opened up the fire hose and just kind of covered it, everybody. Um, but one of the things that I'm going to do for all you guys, um, and I'm going to ask you if you would right now, if you haven't turned off your phone, you just got it on vibrate. Um, go ahead and click and just put your mic. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and send me your email. You can just text my phone number right there. Um, what I'm creating on my own website is an actual membership site where I'm gonna put all of this information and more up because I've tried to give a lot of information and a lot of value to people in the community, businesses and such, and I want to be able to do that and I know that I can't do it in the time frame for tonight. So, so again, my name is Teresa Martin, so just text that to me, your email, and I'll put you in that group and I'll give you all this information and I can even give you, um, share out the presentation and everything to you as well. Um, just to start off, I'm a Floyd native. I've lived here all my life, so I know a lot of people kind of Come to Floyd, fall in love with it, and move here. Um, that's been a lot of the stories of businesses that I've talked to. Um, but I've been here all my life, and my husband has family out in Oklahoma, and he's tried to persuade me to go out to Oklahoma, <laughs> and I keep telling him, absolutely not. I love my mountains. Um, my background is in graphic design, and then I started learning website design back in the early 2000s, so yeah, it's been a while. Um, and then that also learned some 3D computer animation, which was a lot of fun working for an architectural firm. Um, but over the years, we um, formed Studio Thought in 2009, and uh, we kind of branched out into marketing. And when I say we, um, when I was working at the architecture firm, I had a business partner. Um, his name is Steven Smalley. And if you remember from the discussion last week with Tom Skinner, he was talking about, you know, the LLC, the S Corp, the C Corp. Do you remember the conversations on why we would do those? One was because of the legal. And another one was because of taxes. Um, when Stephen and I formed Studio Thought, we were leaving the architectural firm due to a merger. And our idea was that we would both be working full time for Studio Thought. Um, as the years have progressed, he has taken full time employment at another company, and then I'm pretty much running Studio Thought. So, tax purposes, it's not good for him <laughs> if I'm earning income and he's having to pay part of my taxes. So we are restructuring right now, and so I was all into that <laughs> discussion last week with Tom Tanner. Um, and as you see right here, you might see my shirt too, that I am marketing shirt. I'm certified genius partner, so I'm not certified genius like my IQ, <laughs> but I'm part of a group um, out of San Diego, and it is called the School of Genius. And genius is actually um, an acronym that's by Billie Jean Shaw, and you can look him up if you want to. Um, I will warn you that if you are offended by offensive language, he does drop a lot of F-bombs, but the man is really a genius at marketing, and so I've kind of been studying under him with a lot of his um, programs, and I'm part of their, the marketing group, which has people from all over the United States, and we're all able to collaborate and talk about what's working, what's not, you know, the best ideas, so it's kind of like when people work with me, it's like, well, it's not just me, I've got a whole group of people that I work with, too. So the first thing I'm going to go into is website, and yeah. they do something really strange. Who, who's hungry and likes grapes? <laughs> okay, organic, non-organic. Okay. I do not care. <laughs> I do not care either one. I care. Who cares? I you care. Okay. Do you want some grapes? Sure, do you have organic grapes? Organic? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Organic. Yeah. Is it really organic? You can hold on to that thought. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the reason yeah. I'm asking this question, and truly, I was, that was my intent before I found out about not having time. Why did you choose organic? Because it's a grape. Mm -hmm. But why would you choose something organic over non organic? Just quality, I guess. Okay. Why would you choose something organic over non? Um, I don't want any chemicals. Okay. I'm looking for a certain word in 
and you're hitting right on it. Quality. Quality. Um, usually when you buy something and you go to the grocery store, that's why you're saying non-chemicals, but it's the quality, right? The quality of not having a chemically modified food, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Where I'm going with this and how I'm going to tie it into marketing is that when you do your website, your website is kind of the first image that people are going to see of you most of the time, unless someone just knows you right offhand. If someone's looking for a service or looking for a product, oftentimes they're going to go to Google and they're going to type in what they're looking for and then they're going to start going down the list. And so they hit a website, they go to the website, so that's kind of your first impression. And so your first impression and getting found. So it's kind of like the new yellow pages. You know, back in the day before the internet, we went to the yellow pages and kind of looked under the categories. So what is happened now is that we're using that Google search and we're doing a website. And why would it be important for your website to look good if that's your first impression? If you have a website where it's not coming up on your mobile device or you have a website where the text kind of overlapping, what kind of impression would that give you for business? They don't care. They don't care about the Anybody else? No. Not organized. No. Not organized? Well, or they just don't know Right, right. All those are good and valid answers. And I wanted to share with you something because, as I said, I'm, I'm a hometown girl. I've been here um, all my life. And a couple of years ago, you know the, the nice little coffee shop that we have in town? Red Rooster. Um, I was actually on a panel with um, Peyton and Jason Gallimore and a few people. And I thought I had this right behind me. And Peyton actually talked about his website down there. And I just kind of want to quote it. I know even have it. He quoted, um, this is back in 2016, he says, today when I look at our website, I'm ashamed at what our customers see it in the representation of our company. I want it to explode into a million pieces. Thusly, Red Rooster has hired a professional and fairly expensive team, and we have budgeted ten to $15,000 on building our marketing and marketing the new site, which we left a little for live in May. Um, I'm going to get your foot one ahead. And that's what their current website looks like right now. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to budget ten to $15,000, but my point is, is that he saw the need of needing a new website two years ago, and he invested the time and the money to get the quality site so that when his customers come to his site, they see something of quality, and they can go in and they can do their ordering of their coffee online, and it's very well done. So, let's go back. So back here, you know, when you're starting out, as you said, a lot of times people don't know what they're doing, you know, they just need to get something up and something quick. So you have a lot of what they call the DIY builders. Um, so you've got Wix and Weebly, um, a lot of different things like web.com, and all these things, you can even get some GoDaddy sites, they have that, uh, a website builder within that now. They have Google sites, which is, you know, you can go in there and relatively build a simple site. Um, it is cheaper and it is easier because, of course, if you're just trying to save money and try to get something up online quickly, this is more important. <coughs> is it necessarily the quality? That can be, you know, you can beg to debate that. I've seen some really great sites done in Weebly and Wix, and so I'm not going to say that they're not good sites. Um, as a web designer myself, I just know that there's a lot more that I can do if I'm using something like WordPress. Um, you've also got Squarespace, and then I also, you know, a lot of people just develop completely in code. I'm not a coder, but I am a WordPress person, so I do most of my design in WordPress. Um, and as I said, a lot of times that's more than investment. <coughs> With your website, things that I wanted to kind of highlight is that you must be doing right now. You must be responsive. Does anybody know what responsive is? No, if somebody asks questions, questions you respond in, in a timely manner? Well, that would go into basically like your messaging. But responsive in the realm of is your website responsive is if you've got a phone or a tablet or a laptop, the screen, no matter which way you turn it, no matter what size that it is, okay. it will be responsive to whatever device. So therefore, it looks nicely on whichever device that you Google is now requiring that sites be responsive. Now that doesn't mean that they're not, they're gonna knock you off of Google if you don't have a responsive site, but 
for instance, there was a chiropractor that I was talking to down in Lynchburg, and she was paying for AdWords. She was, she was paying for her site to be promoted to the top of the list. Yet at the same time, she did not have a responsive website, so at the same time, Google was knocking her back down. So where her ROI was in that, I'm not so sure. But she did, I talked to her about that, and I said, well, you know that this is something Google is requiring now. And she actually went ahead and redesigned her site so that it would be responsive. Um, second thing that I recommend for everybody is that you have, you have the pixel on your website. Does anybody know about the pixel or what a pixel is? That's one definition of it. As far as when you're talking about imagery and photographs, how many pixels is in it or dots per inch or pixels per inch on your screen. Um, when I say that I recommend that the website be pixeled, what that means is that so often with Facebook being such a big, huge social media thing right now and being able to sell through weight at Facebook, you want your website to be able to talk to Facebook. And so there is a little snippet of code and they call it the pixel. And if you have a Facebook page, you want to be able to connect and put that little snippet of code on your website. The reason for this is say, if I'm searching for um, a new dog groomer, just throwing that out there. Um, if I'm searching for a dog groomer and I go to a website or I go to Facebook and I'm looking for something like that, it's like, well, or let's say I start at the website, Google it and I find one in the area. It's like, okay, well, I'll go check them out. If they've got a pixel on their website, through Facebook, they can then start marketing to everyone that has came to their website. So how that lights up, you know, in your brain is that, wow, you know, I have somebody who's already came to my website. They're obviously interested in my product or my service. Now I can use paid advertising through Facebook to send them messages or to send them an ad and say, hey, you know, I realized you visited our website. Did you know that we're offering a $20 special on dog grooming? And then I'd be like, oh yeah, I want to go there. I want to get that 20% off. So that's why that's so important. And you know, it's Facebook targeting, which I'll get into here in a little bit, is just such a much better way to get ROI on your advertising. So, so that's the other thing that I always want to talk about. Um, and then grow your customer interest. You know, I think we all know that pretty much we are fast at people <laughs> as far as it, you know, it takes a lot to grab our attention a lot of times anymore just because the world is so fast. And I think we've all heard that, you know, grabbing that customer interest right off the bat, you know, to keep them interested in on your site surfing. And I kind of um, put another little thing in here talking about landing pages for marketing. And I'll go into that a little bit further too. Does anyone know what a landing page is just by chance? Yeah. It's okay. All right, we'll go into that too. Popular social media. And again, you know, this section is all on social media, and I'm going to say I'm not going to talk about YouTube tonight, just again due to shortness and time, but I'll make sure that I put something on the website about that. Um, we're going to go from talk about Facebook first off, and then let's organic versus paid. invite your friends and family. Come like my page. Come like my page. So that's great. Um, just trying to get people to like your page and how that shows up. Um, the thing with um, social media, and I, how, raise your hands if you have seen the post that says something or another about how I beat Facebook's algorithm. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I did I'll this, that, and the other, and I, I beat it now. I see all these posts from all my friends. How many have done that? <laughs> I don't see any hands raised. The reason that you see things and sometimes you don't see things, it all depends on your engagement. So if you start a Facebook page and then you don't post anything about your business, those 10, 20 people that liked your page will never see it because everybody's buying for time. If you post great content, so post quality over quantity, then people will start interacting it with it. And especially if you're calling them to a certain action to interact with that content, then they're going to have more of a chance of seeing it. Um, just as an example of that, um, I did a website for a gentleman, and I won't go into his business, but he has another gal that's doing some social media for him, and she does it, you know, like 50 bucks a month, so it's really cheap for him. And she posts, you know, her thing is that she'll post on Facebook, she'll post on Twitter, she'll post on Instagram, and 
Craigslist and like all these different different things. But her posts are always, "Come see my sir, you know, come and get my service. Call me. Do you need my service? Call me." Well, how many times are people going to see that and think, "Well, I mean, you, obviously you want people to call you, but okay, why why would I need to see that post?" But if you took a service and then you kind of added to that and gave the customer value, and let's just say, let's just say you did carpet cleaning or something like that. So instead of just saying, hey, my carpet's dirty, call me, or if your carpet's dirty, call me, what if he posted something like, hey, did you drug spill wine on your carpet? Do you know the best way to get that out is and give that solution? Someone scrolling Facebook might but see that, that likes his page, or you know, someone shared that post out or saw it, and it's like, oh yeah, somebody spilled wine the other night at that party, I'm gonna tag them in it. So they click share, they tag, hey Judy, did you see this? This will get your stain out. And that's how it all starts. So that engagement and then having that quality over quantity of posting. Um, and again, you can extend, the next thing I've got up here is to extend your reach by using hashtags. Um, you follow a single hashtag symbol and something following it. On Facebook, usually they're pretty good up to four Facebook hashtags. On Instagram, you can hashtag it like 20, 30 times. It's, it's much better on Instagram. But for Facebook, usually about four after four, you start to see that reach go down. And I volunteer for Replenish Festivals, so I run their Facebook media during the festival time and built their website. And one of the things that I did this year was be specific about hashtagging and added hashtags to all their posts. So I would ask hashtag festival or SWBA or something like that. And what I noticed this year over years past where I had not done that was that my reach, if you're looking at your post, my reach for like quadruple. Um, for one of the uh, realtors here in town, she had asked me to do some posts for her and I was kind of looking down their insights and usually they've got like 200 people reach on their site and so I posted something for her and I added hashtags of where the, the property location was um, and again, Love Floyd or something like that and it like quadrupled, I think, in posting. I think she ended up getting it spread like 1,200 or something like that. So again... Can I put you in the same yeah. official, uh, not, not it's really official, but we try to use Floyd VA mm -hmm. as a hashtag and for economic development purposes, both, uh, you know, the stuff that we're doing here and um, we use Yes Floyd VA. So mm -hmm. it's just if you want to know, that's what we try to use. Mm -hmm. And with the Crush incentive, the Crush Fridays, we're hashtagging things Crush Fridays yes. right now too. Yes. So. Crush so again, you know, to be able to get your reach out there more. And I don't know if you know how that you can actually search Facebook, but if you go to Facebook and like if you're searching for a friend, you'll go up to the little search bar and type in a name. If you type in dog grooming, for example, all of a sudden that will start lighting up posts that people have made about dog grooming, pages, places, and that type of thing. So again, if you've hashtagged something like that, then it's going to show up in that search. So people sometimes will use Facebook for searching just as much as they will. Um, the different kinds of posts that you have for Facebook, um, post text, you can post a picture, you can post a video, or you can share a link. Now, out of those four, which ones do you think are the most popular picture. for getting reach? Pictures. 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 Pictures and video, because video is a very big thing right now also. But yeah, using a picture versus a link or just a text post is going to get a lot more attention and a lot more. And um, also say so use a CTA. CTA stands for a call to action in your post. So like a few minutes ago when I said, hey, pull out your phones. How many did that? Awesome. Okay. So I gave you a clear call to action. I said, right now, <coughs> text me your email, right? So in a post, if you're posting to your Facebook page, you can say, hey, if you like this, comment below or you know just call them to something if you're interested in receiving 20% off comment below now where this gets really exciting doing those call to actions is if you're using something like working in your messenger the little messenger app with um, Facebook there is kind of an add-on to that called mini chat and that works really fabulous for some businesses especially restaurants too that you can say, you know, try out our new buffalo wings. Comment below for a 20% off coupon. You can actually set that up so that when someone comments on that post, it will zap that coupon right through the Messenger app. 
And what's awesome about that is that you're getting that engagement on that post, which is keeping it live in the feed. And at the same time, you're sending out coupons for those people to redeem it. And I know a gentleman right now that's, he's going all over the country. He goes on vacation and goes to places like Nashville and calls out restaurants. Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't have a Facebook pixel on your page and you're not marketing to me right now. I'm here in Nashville calling, mm -hmm. you know, and he'll do that with a live video feed and just call them out. So, and he is just rocking it right now because he's, he has a whole system for setting up that kind of messaging system and the restaurants are running. And again, um, inviting people to your page, you know, like I said, you invite your friends and family, and I think pretty much all of you probably know how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you know that you can invite people who like your post? Yes. Good. That's Good. awesome. Yeah, if you don't know how to do that, if you've posted something and say you've gotten like 20 people that you don't have liking your page right then and there, that they like it, you can actually click on the post where it says, you know, liked by so and so and 15 others. You can click on that little link. And it will highlight a little box and it will say the names and then it will have an invite button beside of it. And so therefore you can invite all of those people to like your page. And that's one way of being able to grow your likes and grow your audience organically without having to pay. So that's, I always try to take advantage of that and make sure that I'm asking people to like the page because they've already interacted with the post. So they've seen it and they've had some interest in it. Um, does anybody know how many people actually see your content? So say you've got a page that has 2,000 followers. How many people do you think actually see your post? 20. 20. It depends. You go to insights. I don't know. I don't know if there's a, is there a constant <laughs> well, there, there's, number? Well, there's kind of an average. Yeah. There's kind of, it's about 10%. So again, you know, my gentleman that I did a website for, he's got like 200 people that like his page, and so the gal that's doing the social media, 20 people see it almost every time, you know, because I can go in there and kind of look at the insights, 20 people see it. So, you know, it's really hard to grow your page organically, and that's why you end up having to invest in some paid advertising often. Um, but it's really hard. But those are some of the tips that you can do, like I said, by going out and inviting people to like your page, hashtag it and that kind of thing. Those are all things that you can do organically without having to pay Facebook anything. I have a quick question on that too. Mm -hmm. um, is it true that like if you start off organic and then you do go to paid advertisement, does Facebook have something in their algorithm that when you try to do your next organic kind of blast that it, it dips? I've not heard that. I've okay. not heard that before. And I mean, they definitely want you to do the paid advertisement. Right. So for instance, if you go out and post a link Again, you know, if, you're, if you watch your insights and you post a link versus a picture, that link is not going to show up to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the links taken in places, that's what Facebook wants you to pay for. Right. That's why they, the, those kind of get shoved down versus, you know, just an image that's getting shared out. Yeah, I, I worked with a nonprofit a couple of years ago. It was like after we would do a, a big event and we mm -hmm. would try to get people to come to it so we would do the, the sponsored ad it looked like for the next month or so it was really hard to get our regular audience that was organic mm -hmm. following us to, mm -hmm. to latch back onto that. If you don't mind email me that and I will double check. But okay. I, have, I hadn't heard that before but that's okay. worth researching to, to know for sure. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. So on the 10 the percent if you, send, if, you, if you post something on Monday and you get your 10%, if you post the same thing on Tuesday, is it the same 10% or do they like, is it randomly picked out of your numbers? I think it's kind of random and it really it's, it's based on that engagement again. So if people interact with it, you know, people will kind of keep seeing that. Um, if you're posting the same thing, I think Facebook will probably kind of start penalizing that if it's the exact same thing all the time. It's like, well, they're just just trying to post more but um if you're trying to again get that interaction that's really what you want to go for is to get that interaction and ask people to share content and to share to like things and you can comment people and tag people below. Well. so so page growth as i was just saying only about 10 percent of your fans get to see your message um, until you start using paid advertising and when you start using paid advertising you'll watch those insights explode mm -hmm. um and i had like something really crazy like 500 or some thousand percent and yeah. it's like wow that's just crazy yeah. but they weren't getting a lot of interaction before then um but again once you start using it and you kind of learn the gist of it you have some really great big wins on your engagement um i already talked about hacking the, the facebook live almost oh, i can't say that word algorithm <laughs> <laughs> i always trip up over that um so running an ad bringing a 
them to a landing page versus directly to your website. Um, I mentioned landing pages a while ago, and again, who knew? I think you said something about it. Does anybody else know what the landing page is? The landing page is where your customers tend to land. I mean, if they're Googling a particular product, it's the page that they come in on or whatever. Right. And you can make them kind of basically have a specific purpose. So like when you go to a website, you usually have a, a navigation bar at the top where you can go check out the About Us, if they've got news, if they've got a blog, where they're located, how to contact them, all these bells and whistles, so to speak. Where with a landing page, you can basically knock all of that out and just bring them to the page. So when you're doing an advertisement, if you're saying, okay, fill out our form or join our email list and get 10% off of you know, whatever product or service, you bring them to the page, you don't want them to be distracted of, oh, what are they doing here? Or what other product do they have? So for instance, like I do website design and marketing. So if I were to add, run an ad specifically for marketing, when someone gets to my website, I'm not gonna want them to get distracted by my website design. I want them to kind of walk through that journey or basically a sales funnel to come through and say, I want you to do my social media, my, my, my marketing, my digital marketing. So what you'll do is you bring them to a page and you can build these pages on your website or you can build them on something like lead pages or click funnels. Um, those might be terms that you've heard, but those are different websites that you can subscribe to. And what that does is basically allow you to get what they call a higher converting page. So someone clicks on an ad, they go to the page, again, if they're wanting you know, my, my digital advertising, so they come there and I say, okay, give me your information, and they click submit, so I've got their information. So it's just a much more strategic way of being able to kind of walk people through what you want them to do in order to help them. Is anybody advertising for their businesses right now? You are? What are you using for advertisement right now? Um, well, I generally go through Instagram and Facebook. I pay occasion on Facebook, but I don't see much positive return. Okay. Money in Facebook. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody else doing digital marketing or advertisement, or are they using a newspaper or a radio? When we just had a radio interview by that Ladina pulled together for Virginia Tech to do that, we that because Virginia Tech put it on Facebook, linked to our website, and on Facebook there was this banner on the top saying, "Boost this now! You've yes. got a link you should go for." <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we did, and we probably got another 600 hits from it. Okay. Did no sales. No sales. <laughs> okay. We're not a quick business. Well, and that was going to be my next question, too, because it, Facebook tries to get you, they, they try to help. <laughs> and, you know, there are a lot of useful to, tools on there. If you go through, like, the blueprint, you know, that kind of walks you through everything. And it, there's a lot of useful tools out there. But they do pop up, you know, you've got a great ad, you know, a great post going on. Boost it now. Boost it now. You know, you can reach thousands of people. And the more. first one's free. Yeah. You know, that kind of gets you in there, so that's what they do. But I, like I said, you can do a paid advertisement and be a lot more strategic. Um, the reason I was asking if anybody did newspaper or radio or television, um, just to share my personal experience, um, there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do advertising. Um, myself and Stephen and I were trying to start Studio Thought. We actually had this idea for kind of an offshoot, something called Hometown Freebies, and it was going to be basically similar to what Groupon was doing. Um, and so we did some advertising for it. So we called a local radio station, well, not local here in Floyd, but a radio station out of Vernon that gets, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of listeners, and we ran an ad. But there's different levels of the ads that you can do, and what we could afford was the ads that happened at late at night. <laughs> <laughs> not during the morning rush, not when everybody's listening to the radio. So, and you had to spend about $300 a month, and you had to commit to three months. So that's $900 dollars that I'm spending trying to get a message out to everybody. This is well before I took all my courses and well, so much more now. <laughs> um, but what happened, it was just, you know, kind of looking at that hindsight 2020, it's like, was that my target audience? Sure, it got to tens of thousands of people, but was that my target audience? Was that who we really needed to? Kind of the same thing with a billboard, you know, you get lots of traffic, but, you know, 
who's really looking at the billboard and can you tell if you're getting that feedback? You know, you, that was great that they put it on the website and linked it and everything too, because you got that residual traffic, you got return traffic probably to your site. Probably so, still getting some. Yeah, and that's awesome. That's, that's super awesome because oftentimes if you're just running an advertisement, that's not, that doesn't no, This happen. was a gift. Yeah, that was, that was. Um, and like I said, same thing in television, newspaper, you just don't know who you're gonna get. So I like old cars and, you know, but that's not traditionally a woman kind of thing. So if somebody's trying to market spark plugs, they're probably not gonna market to women because a lot of us don't care. <laughs> as long as the car turns on and it goes, that's all we're happy with, right? <laughs> so, you know, the Facebook ads, what the great thing about it again is that you can target people. So you kind of define who your audience is and then you target them. Mm -hmm. um, so many people I ask, you know, well, what kind of product? And I'll just, I'll throw this out here. I don't know what size anybody's on with Nike. But here's, a, here's an example. Nike made this decision, and we all know about it, I'm sure. Um, but they knew who their target audience was, mm -hmm. and their sales have went up. So even though it's caused controversy, they knew who they were targeting when they did what they did. So, you know, it worked out well for them. And again, you know, so many people is like, well, I've got a product for everybody. Well, tennis shoes, everybody has a pair of tennis shoes, right? They might not be Nike, but everybody wears tennis shoes. So technically, Nike can market to everybody, but they knew of a select group that they were trying to target, and that's what they did. So, um, so how did you figure that out really well? <laughs> Nike's been around a lot longer than me, so. <laughs> um, and for me, myself, I just, I, I invest myself in studying, and like I said, part of the group that I'm with, with um, the School of Genius, as I said, they call it, um, it's, it's just continually changing. So I've invested a lot of time and, and interest, you know, and even finance into just continually learning, because as we all know, Facebook's been around for how long? Mm -hmm. And it's not the same as when it started. Mm -hmm. It's continually evolving, continually changing. Um, talking about building your own radio station, again, that's kind of using those Facebook ads. When someone clicks, if you run an ad and someone clicks on it, then you know that they're interested in your ad. So you can do what's called retargeting. And oftentimes, retargeting is less expensive. Um, so basically, once you start doing that kind of thing, you can kind of build your own radio station. And the guy that I was telling you about the restaurants, that's how he classifies it because he gets the people in his funnel, you know, the people that click for the coupon for the free entree or the free appetizer, and he gets them all in there, and then he just continually retargets to them, and then it grows and it grows and it grows. So he's essentially building his own audience specifically for whatever business, so whatever restaurant. Um, they're retargeting, we talked about that. Use Facebook messengers to bot, the bots to interact with engage, and you were talking with, um, Talking about the the responsiveness, oh, yeah. that is that is a big well, thing with you know the messenger. You know, a lot of times it will say that they'll respond immediately or several hours or days or <laughs> you know, and you want to keep that kind of minimal because you want your customers to interact with you, and know that they can get in touch with you. Um, as I said, you can actually use ManyChat to build a whole bot thing. I think I've got a slide on that next <clears throat> that walks them through everything. And advertising to a lookalike audience. So again, if you've got people coming to your website or interacting with your ad, your ad that you've got running, you can actually create what's called a lookalike audience. So it will kind of take all those people, the user data that it has, all those people, and it will try to find other people out on Facebook in that same kind of category, and you can get, generate what's called a lookalike audience. And a lot of times that will help you get in customer response. So again, I was talking about that target market. Um, one of the things that I'll put out there on the website is a worksheet for what we call an avatar. So really just kind of setting down and thinking about who your target audience is so that you can make sure that you're targeting and basically advertising to the right people. So again, done wrong. Yes, Facebook can waste your time and spend your money. Um, again, when Stephen and I tried to do the hometown freebies thing, I didn't know what I know now and I just kind of put money to it and same thing. All the money went away with not a lot of return. Um, so again, now I get to be much more strategic about it because as I got into learning digital advertising, I just opened up a whole new world. Um, so and again, running a campaign is, is more than just you know posting or clicking boost posts. 
um, done correctly, you can really harness the power of Facebook. So again, doing instead of just doing a boost post, you can actually go in and in the ads manager of Facebook. And I won't show all that tonight. That's something I'd like to do at some point. It's time to have a class on that. Um, just showing you how to set up a whole complete advertisement and all that targeting. Right. Um, again, so, what's my time? Because I always get long with this. So. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you have about 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay. All right. This is um, basically a slide that's kind of, kind of touched upon anyway with Messenger um, mini chat. Like I said, you can start with that. Um, the Messenger app, and you can actually set up some things within there. You probably maybe even seen something where you click and it says get started. You know, people are trying to set up those apps. Um, but again, the, the mini chat just adds a whole nother level to it. Like I said, you know, taking someone through the whole process of the sales funnel, you know, here's an advertisement for, you know, click here to get this 20% off of the free appetizer. And then if they don't use it, you can actually send a message back out to those people to say, Oh, you know, you didn't use your appetizer coupon. Would you like another? Um, and just an example from, again, the guys in my group, they said that you know, they sent out one of those messengers to say, hey, your coupon's going to be expiring. And someone who would gotten it like three months ago came in. So, you know, just that reminder, because we all get busy. And we get busy in our lives and we can forget. So it's nice to be able to have ways that we can reach back out to our customers and remind them. Um, and again, but with mini chat, it's actually free to start. Um, you don't get all the different levels, but you can certainly start it and for free. Um, then you can go into like a $10 a month or $145 a month or more. And all that is based upon how many messages that you're sending and how many different things you're trying to do with it. So if you're just kind of doing some general questions, usually you can set that up for free. Again, it works great for restaurants, people who want to offer coupons. Um, as I mentioned, you can comment on the post and that automatically sends them a coupon through Messenger. And of course, it's boosting that um, post that you made with Um Bots right now, they're just really, really big, and they're gonna, I think they're going to grow. It's very similar to email marketing. And I think you could click the next one. This is the fun, this is the fun part. Um, probably you know that you're going to answer a text before you'll answer an email or even a messenger. If you look at this one right here, there's 582 emails waiting in the inbox. There's only one text here. So who puts their text as a priority over their email? For most everybody. Um, Messenger is kind of that same way. It's similar to email marketing, but I find for myself, and you guys can raise your hands again too, do you answer your messenger before you will your email? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It pops up on your phone. You get a notification for it, right? Um, just for grins and giggles, how many unopened emails do you have? Who, who's got the highest number of unopened <laughs> emails on their phone right now? I'll tell you mine, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> well, I'll leave mine. Because this isn't my screenshot. <laughs> Anybody got 2,000? Higher, lower? More than that. More than that? Okay, how many you got? I got 18,901. 18,901, okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. Well, well, we'll, right. we'll get... <laughs> Anybody got more than 18,000? You're the winner. I'm going to give you a candy bar. <laughs> wow. Do you know how to use <laughs> Do what? That just means I don't know how to use technology. In that room. Well, if you're like me. Now, this is what I do, and that's why I was going to share with you with mine. My, my phone probably has five email accounts coming to it, but one account is my junk account. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime that you go to a website, everybody's taking that as, oh yeah. Um, you go to a website, and you really want the information, but you're afraid they're going to start spamming you, and so they give you, you, know, you want to give them a bad email or just something that you don't check. One of mine has that. I have 22,000, so <laughs> you almost need um, who has no unopened emails? I clear mine out. You do? Wow. She has to make sure my business stuff. She's, she raised her hand first. Um, I work with Chateau Marcel and I'm their event planner. So ah. when people want to do yeah. corporate events, they want a wedding, they want to make a reservation, uh, just like with Stonewall Bed and Breakfast, they want to do it now. Right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than people wanting to get a hold of someone and not, and, and I'm 
that name on Chateau Morset sites. And I have no option. It, it stays up 24 hours a day. <laughs> well, and that's great. You know, and you were just talking, you know, does that mean I'm just not, you know, just don't know computers or whatever. It's like I said, it, it depends on who you are. I can't say that that's bad having that many or that's good not having that many. It's just that, like you said, it's the nature of your business and you probably don't have one of those junk emails coming to your phone because you're interested in the emails that count. Yeah, I unsubscribe. If, if right. it's something that, there's that, that very last little gray bar at the bottom yes. that says unsubscribe. And on Mondays, I go through and I unsubscribe to everything that's not applicable. Yeah, what I, do. I have a couple of that I've tried to get off their list. I I did not go to Virginia Tech, but somehow I'm on the alumni Toki list. <laughs> I have unsubscribed several times because I'm not an alumni and I still get the emails. Um, political parties, I think I'm on every political party. And again, I've unsubscribed because I'm tired of hearing everybody and I can't get off the list. You know, so I don't know. I mean, it's really, technically, it's illegal to be spamming people and not removing them from the list. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, if I could fight that, and, but <laughs> it's just delete, delete, or just let it sit there. <laughs> okay, so Instagram. Now, I'm going to be upfront and forward with you that I am not an Instagram expert. However, what you do when you don't know something is you go to an expert and say, hey, Tell me what you got. Share with me your knowledge. So um, I work with a guy that he does Instagram. He's fabulous at it. And he's actually um, a musician as well as a marketer. So, you know, I asked him, I was like, can you give me some input? So on your handouts, that's pretty much what you had. I just copy pasted it. Um, so I don't know if you want me to read over those. But again, you know, Instagram is just the biggest thing for millennials right now. I think I have that. So, yeah, you can put in each of those. Each of these are actually on the handout that you have. So, and what he suggests you know, is always using high resolution pictures um, for your profile. He says you need a good bio, and that means to be about what you do, where you're located, and any other kind of quick information that your market might be captivated with. And he said it's best for posting um, usually five times a week, and again, it's, it's similar to Facebook, that quality over quantity. Um, you definitely want to keep engaging your customers, engaging the followers, but you don't want to, you know, just give them silly stuff. Um, like call me. <laughs> um, so let's define. And he's found that the best times are between 5 and 10 p.m. So I'm not sure where he, he got that data, but like I said, he's he's rocking it on Instagram right now, so I'm really trust him. Um, your content has to be something that your audience is interested in, again, like deals. Um, everybody likes getting deals or good causes like charities or special events. Hashtags that relate to your brand need to be used in the comments right after you post and he says you can post 10 to 25. So again, lots and lots of hashtags there. Instagram is really great for that brand awareness and being able to just help brand yourself. So it's primary purpose, as he says, is, is brand building and not actually direct sales with it. Um, he says, while it's true that you can have direct sales from Instagram, you should focus on the content. Mm -hmm. uh, general rule is to only post sales one out of ten times. So, and that's true with pretty much, I think, all marketing. I've always heard, you know, give them good content two out of three times, and then you can, you know, offer them something. Tactics for growth. Um, he says the ten cent rule: if you give your two cents on five local people post by commenting something useful, you can gain lifelong fans. Um, that's how he's grown his following to well over 10,000 now. Um, following everyone who likes your competitors' posts is extremely effective. Um, once you reach 100 followers, unfollow back to 500. Um, following 100 an hour between 5 and 10 p.m. works the best. And I kind of like gave him my Instagram <coughs> account and said, you know, make it, make it happen. And yeah, he's immediately I started getting all kinds of notifications where you know, people were commenting back and following back and that. Um, sending 10 messages an hour to random local accounts is time consuming pieces, but it's extremely effective. And the best way to use the paid in, in, in Instagram advertising is the same as Facebook. Select your target audience. So you can target them by their age, whether they're male or female, location, interest. Um, this is why this is the easiest and most effective. It is also the most expensive as we get into the ads. Um, extra things to know always focus on the content of your mar target market. That market that's interested in, always keep it short and sweet. Um, Instagram videos are extremely effective, and videos just are always really effective, period. 
Um, create fan star replying to every comment because people want to know that you're there and you're not just some little bot. And So again, you know, that's that call to, call to action, you know, ask a question to get people to comment so that, again, you can grow that more organically. Um, and as I said, uh, you can visit Studio Thought, and like I said, I will send you guys a link to a private membership on that, um, just so that you can see that. I'm not quite done with it, there's more to it. I think that was just, I want to make sure that people knew that they could get the content. Um, tools and resources. Um, and again, just into the marketing, um, these are some of the tools like MailChimp. Is anybody familiar with MailChimp or <laughs> Constant Contact? Okay, those I always recommend, especially MailChimp because it's free to, for the first so many, um, and that you can create your email list. And I'm always boggled by the amount of businesses that don't have an email list because those are the people that are interested that you can market back to. Um, so go ahead and email. Do you have a customer list? Um, one of the things that you want to be doing is collecting the email addresses so that you can reach out to them. Collect phone numbers because again, there is um, there are apps where you can text people versus the, the email. And a lot of times, as I said, people will open that text first. It is more expensive, but it is, you get a lot more response from it. Um, again, these are just ways to stay in touch with your customers. You don't need to spam, spam them with five emails a day because they're gonna quickly unsubscribe because they don't want that. But if you give them a chance, you know, you give them a chance to opt out and give them content every day that they're appreciative of, again, you know, not telling them, hey, call my carpet service, but telling them how they can get the wine stain out or the mud from the flood or, you know, that kind of thing. That's useful information that they're going to like and they're going to want to stay on the list. Um, then, of course, you can segment your list um, versus marketing cold people versus warm, the cold warm audiences. Um, not sure how familiar people are with the marketing terms like that, but essentially cold is, you know, you're a brand new startup business, no one knows who you are, so it's really hard to like go out and talk to people about it. But as you start getting to know people, getting your face out there, maybe on video, letting people get to know you, then the audience starts to warm up to you. It's like, oh yeah, just, you know, like tonight you'll be like, oh yeah, that's that girl that does that web design stuff, that's studio fodder. You know, you might remember that versus, if I just walked up on your street and talked to you. Um, and then you'd be like, who is this girl and why is she talking to me? <laughs> but again, we're Floyd, so that's kind of long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, another way to gain growth in your social media is using contests. Everybody loves contests. Um, so if you've got something that you can give away, you can um, basically set up whole different, lots of different things with that. There are paid ways to do it, but probably the easiest and cheap way free way to do it is just to have a giveaway on Facebook. Make it a post and say comment on the post if you'd like to win. I think Citizens did that recently with Floyd Fest tickets. And so people just commented and then there's a little comment picker so it automatically goes through all the comments, grabs a name, and that's the winner. And so, you know, that's really simple and easy to do. And again, it's getting people to comment on your post, which is again going to grow it organically. Um, but always, always make sure you post who the winner is. <laughs> Nothing's more frustrating than I entered this contest and I don't know who won. Did I win? I guess I didn't because I didn't get an email or I didn't see a post. So make sure that you do post a winner. And what's even better is if the winner will let you do a video and say, hey, here's my tickets, you know, Floyd Best Tickets, yay. Because um, that will grow too and people will like that. Um, this is an example. Um, I'm a big Toby Mac fan. I don't know if anybody knows who Toby Mac is. <laughs> um, he sent out an email. Here's, here's the way marketing works and here's how it worked on me. Um, he sent out an email, and it was a movie that came out a few weeks ago, ago called Beautifully Broken, and it was about refugees, and it was based on a true story, and I was sitting there reading my email while my dogs were playing outside, and I was like, you know, this looks like that might be kind of a good movie. Um, I already have tickets to the concert November 1st. Um, in this email, he says, if you go to the movie, you take a picture, you, you saw that email too? <laughs> You take a picture of your, your tickets. You don't have to take a picture of yourself, but you take a picture of your tickets and you post it on social media and hashtag beautifully broken film. What they were gonna do after the weekend, the, the opening weekend, they were gonna take a winner, they were just gonna pick a winner, and give them meet and greet passes and t-shirts at whatever concert that they went to. 
So my daughter and I, I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go do this, you know. Um, my son was wanting to see Megalodon, so I sent him into another theater with his cousin. She and I went to see the, the theater with Beautifully Broken. We did our selfie picture with our tickets. I posted it on Instagram. I posted it on Facebook. I shared it on Twitter. You know, I did all those little things. And come Tuesday morning, I had a little tip, uh, post back saying, Tracy, you're the winner. So, mm -hmm. yay, I get to go. But that's, you know, that contest kind of thing where you get people interacting. And what was interesting to me, you know, from the marketing aspect, because I was like, you know, searching the hashtag, okay, who, who's my competition? How much competition? What kind of chance do I have of winning this? And it really wasn't as much as I thought it would be. But again, this was a film that normally I probably wouldn't have gone to because I have kids and we usually go to the animated flicks and Disney flicks and DreamWorks flicks, that kind of thing. And this was based on a true story and it was not always a happy movie. It had a happy ending, but it went through the whole thing with Rwanda and the war and people being killed and that kind of thing. So, you know, it wasn't the happy movie starting off. So it wasn't a movie that I probably would have, but again, due to the marketing, it's like, oh yeah, let's go see this, because it looked like it would have a good story by the end of it. And it was something, too, that taking my daughter there, she now knows that life is not the same in every aspect of the world as it is here in the United States. So it was kind of a, a, a moment, a teaching moment for me as a mom. So, sorry to go off on <laughs> um, Again, the link, that's um, just a, another app that I said you could pay for. And which you may have seen some of these contests where it's like if you like us on Facebook and you follow us on Twitter and you're kind of like checking the boxes and you get points, that's kind of what the Glean app does and it is a paid app to win those contests. Um, All right, and SEO, um, some people still, I've got, I have people question what is SEO still? Search engine optimization is what that's called, and that's what gets you found on Google. Um, and this is kind of just a, again, a quick little overview. By no means is it all in detail, but again, you've got a, a handout on that as well. Um, first things first, register your business at business.google.com. What they'll do is they'll end up sending you a little postcard, and it will give you a little code that you can go back, and it just verifies your business on Google, and that locally does wonder, so that's one of the things you want to make sure that you do. Um, if you're using WordPress in your website building, you can install a plugin that's free, and it's called Yoast SEO. And if you're a blogger and you're blogging on your website, or even just your pages, you can use that tool to kind of help key into those keywords, and again, make it better SEO, make it be, be better found through search engine optimization. Um, these are more little things like selecting the keywords for your business. Um, again, you don't want to just say restaurant. Okay, well, all right, you're a restaurant, so what would you have? Maybe you're a seafood restaurant or a seafood, that speci seafood restaurant, that's a restaurant specializing in crab leg night, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you want to make it two to five words and be very specific about it. Um, you want to build your content around those keyword phrases. And again, that's on the handout. And I put note here, this is where a good web designer comes in handy because what happens with some of the sites, like the do-it-yourself sites with Wix and Weebly, um, they make it so easy to build your site that you're looking in your pictures and you're putting in your pictures, but you don't put what they call a little alt tag. One of the things that you can do for your search engine optimization with each photograph, you can say, you know, here's a photograph of Crab Cake's Delight, you know, at such and such restaurant. And that's gonna help that, you know, again, you know, with your search engine optimization. But as I said, a lot of those sites, and I mean, you can do it, a lot of, not the best web designers too, as they're doing even in WordPress, you might get a professional design site. They may not put all those alt tags in those images either. So again, that's just a good practice to do. Just to get that in there, just again, for me, it's an alt tag, you click on the picture and it has a definition come up. Yeah, you'll see like a description, and then a lot of times it'll say alt, A-L-T, tag. And that's where you want to put in that just that little bit of data of what it is. So again, it gets helped. You, you're able to be found easier on the, on the search. Just be clear. You know how Bing has that picture, and it goes different places on the picture. It has a little thing. 
like a hot spot? It's not. A, it's it's the difference between a caption and a a search engine caption. So on your website, when you're building it, you can pop up your image and you can do a hidden text on your picture that sets the alt text. That's kind of what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. The SEO yes. text. Yeah. That's not something that, that someone scrolling your site will see as like a caption of, hey, I said party. It's um, it's a it's a back end hidden alternate text on your picture that defines it to another level. Right. So like if you've got basket of food in it, then that's your subtext that when someone searches on mm -hmm. Google basket of food, mm -hmm. that it takes it to that site, to that image. But they don't see this the text that says basket of food. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's 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 hidden. It's hidden extra text within your in site. Your for your husband, like the world doesn't see that text. It but it's a visual, it's a total connection with the search engines, but visually you won't see it. Yeah, it's not like right. the text. It's behind, behind the scenes. scenes. Like so you could describe your business in different places on your website. Yes. Mm -hmm. You hide your that keywords. Google picks it up. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right. You keep hiding your oh. keywords in your website. New basket, French basket, new basket, basket, hidden basket, and the world basket. So they don't see that. Right, so like if you were to do a search after that, say so making sure you did a search on baskets, well, then you might pop up something like you said, food basket, and it's like, oh, well, that looks like a nice food basket, and then click to that image, which would then take you to that site. So, does that answer? Um, and then link, what we call link juice, is basically linking from other valuable websites. So, you know, when people are doing link building, they're usually reaching out to other websites and having them link back. So the more that you can get links back to your website and link out to others, which, you know, as a business of Floyd, I think most people would want to link out at some point to Floyd, you know, visit Floyd VA or, you know, some of the Floyd sites just to kind of get those linked in there. Um, the other thing that you want to do is submit your site or your, a single page unit um, through Google Search Console and also on Bing. And I, admit, I don't use Bing a whole lot, so that's why I was like listening really intently on that because I wasn't sure exactly what you're talking about there for a second. Um, but you do need to register on there. Um, and then, of course, link a content piece through your social network. So if you're blogging, you know, blogging is always what's keeping your website kind of up to date and fresh. Um, so that's why people, you know, will do blogs and they like doing that kind of thing. But then you can post that out on your social media and, of course, drive the traffic back to your website again. So. Again, if you write, write a really nice piece and you, people start sharing it who may not have visited your website, they'll click on the link, they'll go to the website. If you've got that Facebook pixel, then you can retarget to them through an advertising campaign and say, hey, you know, where are you interested in? And kind of write your ad from there. Um, you can also hire out SEO. Um, you know, some people are just like, I don't want to mess with that. Does somebody do it for me? Um, base, from what I understand when I've asked people you know, for doing SEA services, usually it runs about $350 a month and they want you to do it for three months because they want to be able to get it out there and of course see that return on your investment. So, some people may charge higher, some people may charge low, but that's kind of about the average that I've seen. Um, and again, video, I, some people get used to it. There's so many people like, I don't want to be on video. Please don't video me. <laughs> um, but just watching my own husband come home from work, he, he kind of he has a very physical, demanding job. So when he comes home, that's kind of his relaxation time. He, he never posts anything on Facebook, but he likes to scroll. <laughs> and he likes to watch videos. So he'll watch video after video. Um, and that's also what people will catch your attention. Um, one of the things that caught my attention again, that my friend that's the, the musician, I was scrolling one day and saw him in a reindeer costume. And I was like, what, what? <laughs> what is he doing in a reindeer costume? But it was about Christmas and he was promoting his album and that's what stopped me from scrolling. Cause it's like, okay, here's this guy in this reindeer costume, what is he saying? So of course I had to stop and hit play. So again, you know, catching people's attention, they'll say, you know, do what they call pattern interrupt where you get right up in front of the camera or you're waving or doing something crazy, you know, just that pattern interrupt to catch people's attention to stop them and make them watch the video. Um, and also in the videos, you can make it, um, like I said, it's more engaging than reading an ad. And you can do more call to action. So in your video, you can tell people, hey, comment below. I'm sure you've probably seen that. Comment below if you want this or, you know, do this or that. So you can kind of call that out and you have a little bit more leeway with that. And advertising 
over to you because you can get by with a few more things in the video. And again, Facebook will give priority to your live feeds over anything else. So if you're sharing a video and somebody does a live video, they're going to give priority over that live video. What do you mean live video versus sharing a video? Well, for instance, if you've recorded something or if you're just seeing a video somewhere else and you share that out, it's just going to kind of go in that whole algorithm thing where, again, you know, the images and the video is going to be first. But if you, as a business owner, go live on your business page say, hey, we're having a grand opening, we're going to do ribbon cut cutting on Monday at 12 o'clock, that video will get promoted up because it's a live feed. Facebook likes for you to stay on their platform. Um, and you'll get a lot more engagement because, again, it's popping up. And you can actually tell people to follow you and have it, ask them to turn on their live notifications so that every time that you go live, if someone's scrolling, it'll pop up and tell them that you're live. And they'll flip over to it so that they can catch it. So, have you ever done live or know how to go live? Usually on your Facebook post, um, your feed, your news feed, of course, when you type in something or you click the image to you know, select an image and share out, there's a little video button there too, and it will say, you know, you can do a video or do a live. Right. And if you do a live, you know, what happens with that is that you can talk to and engage people right then and there. So again, you know, I was saying, I like to take back, we went to a festival this summer up in Pennsylvania. And so kind of to let family know that, hey, we made it, we got our camp set up. I, I did a Facebook live while I was there. Gave them a whole tour of my tent and, you know, all the cool little things, you know. And my husband's like, hey, you know, I see this and what cool chairs. And, you know, they were just commenting. It was fun, you know, just to be able to talk to people. So, you know, when you relate that to your business and your marketing, you can always go out and, like, I even see people that do um, LuLaRue to do a live feed mm -hmm. about when they get their clothes in, you know, and they're going live with, you know, what's in the box. And so she'll, this one lady that I know, she goes out and does a live feed, and you know, here's this shirt, here's this pants, here's this. And, you know, it has a number and people will comment, sold, I want that. So, you know, she's doing really well with her business, just being able to get people to purchase right then and there on their live feed. So they're doing the smartphones and things like that to mm -hmm. do the live feed. That's not computer. You can do you computer. Can, yeah, you can do it from your desktop also. I mean, it's usually just easier on your phone just to go live when you're on your phone. Of course, you know, I see so many people that, you know, they're just walking down the street talking to people. And like I was talking about the gentleman that was in Nashville, he was on his phone, you know, calling restaurants out, but the restaurant sign behind him, that kind of thing. But you can do it from your computer too, and just, you know, like if you're doing something educational, um, you can say, you know, here's, I'm gonna share my screen and that kind of thing, and you can do it there on your computer also. So you don't have to have a smartphone. So I know there's there's a few people that are like, I don't want a smartphone, I'm happy with my flip phone, leave me alone. <laughs> So you can do it either way. Um, and again, like I said, teaching, you can record it once, and that's kind of what I thought I would try to out tonight is record it myself since it was kind of an unpolished, <laughs> unpolished presentation. Um, and then you can teach multiple times because you can put it up as a webinar, or you can put it on your Facebook page, you can put it on your website. So, you know, I, I, I think about you with your personal training that you had, had going on, you know, where you could actually do something like that. You know, here's these different things that you can these certain exercises where if they can't get out of the house to go to the gym or they've got little ones that they can't take with them, you know, how different exercises that you can do just around the home. So, you know, there's multiple different things that you can do. So, um, and I have the question, what do you think is popular? I've already answered that at Facebook Live. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things I said, so what do you think is popular is you can learn just about anything off of YouTube. Um, as an example of that, my son is a YouTube geek, and you know he's 12, and I think most kids of that age, or that's that's kind of where they are. But it's like I'll hand him a manual. It's like you know, here read this to do whatever, and he's like, no, I'll just go to YouTube because you know it's visual, and I get that it's visual because they can you know see how to do something, and you know we're all different learners. Some people are more hands-on, some people are more visual, um, but YouTube is just big and huge right now, and often it's entertaining. And more importantly, it lets people get to know you because people will buy, as far as your, your business and selling, from people they trust. So just like we turn on the evening news and we see the people on Channel 7 and the people on Channel 10, kind of feel like we know them because we, they're in our living rooms every night when you turn on the news, right? So you kind of start to feel like you know them even though you really don't, but because they're on there all the time. So just do that video.
Stell dir Gönnata? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a couple minute break and walk around and be sure and sign up if you're interested in some of those things.